degrees out in the frigid desert. Mouse from G5, double on buckshot, about 12 yards. Sevens Maelstrom G5. Smoothly flecked on the right, orange peel on the left. Here's a question for you. As of 2011, is the 4.7's Maelstrom G5 the perfect high value weapon light? That is a tough question. The short answer will go something like this. Sorry for the disappointment. Nope. It just isn't. The reason is because the word perfect is in the question. What is the perfect weapon light? Well, for me, it would cost 50 bucks, throw 500 lumens, and weigh about 3 ounces. Kind of along the form factor of the also excellent previous review in the Nut Fancy Project, Quark 123 Turbo. And I'm probably going to draw some parallels against this form factor uh, on the G5. Maybe a better question is, does the Maelstrom G5 uh, advance the technology to a meaningful degree in the philosophy of use of weapon light? I will do my best to answer it, nut and fancy style, in this tabletop review. Yep. Sorry it's taking me so long to get to the G5. I should have knocked this review out in 2010. These lights, both of them, by the way, have been in inventory here in the Nut and Fancy Project since that time, undergoing thorough testing, some of which you've seen already in the intro. I'll get to the specifics as we jam down the talking points. And let me say this. I've said it before, I want to re-emphasize it. There are a lot of great lighting companies out there. It's not just 4.7s. And I don't mean to just review 4.7s lights. The problem in the Nut and Fancy Project is time. I just don't have a lot of it. Um, you know, you'll probably see more reviews from like Phoenix, Olight, some other outstanding lighting manufacturers, not just 4.7s. Um, it's just a time factor for me. So what I try to do is pick and choose some of the best high value options for different POUs. Um, I'm going to talk more about that as the review goes on. Throw them out for your consideration. Let's look at the G5 in depth. Sorry if I get some details wrong and I miss stuff that's important to you. In fact, if I have a trend that I would like to move towards, it's probably less detail in my lighting reviews because there's so many lights to cover. I'd really like to do it in 20 minutes. I just think that's probably going to be an impossibility. Let's get rocking, size and weight. Maelstrom G5. It's going to be bigger, just like I alluded to in the intro, than the also excellent Quark 123 Turbo. In that review, I said this is almost the perfect form factor. And I also think I mentioned the fact if we could keep the weapon light and actually whatever POU you want to throw it in, this size, and we just increase the capabilities, I'm talking throw, burn time, then man, I'm stoked. And if we talk about the perfect weapon light, it's going to be looking just about like this, in my opinion. One reason is we don't want to throw a bunch of weight on our gun. And guys who are not gun guys, bear with me. I'm going to cover some other POUs. I often cover that because it's such a demanding application for a light. What I'm asking the light to do for me at 100 yards, maybe 200 yards, in all kinds of weather conditions is challenging. I mean, I, here I am the other day in 10 degree weather, it's pitch black outside and I'm shooting steel at 125 yards. That's tough. It's tough for a little tiny light, you know, when the big scheme of things to consider, for that light to perform to that level. All right. By the way, that is a kel SU-16 Bravo model in Digicam. That's actually a digital multicam, in case you're wondering. It was one of the test beds uh, helping me with these two G5s. All right, size and weight. By the way, by representation, there are two G5s on the table. Obviously, this one's dura-coated in Magpul Flat Dark Earth, 
by missionspetcamo.com. And this one's stock, and I lost a spacing ring. Sorry, I'll have to get another one from 4.7s. Uh, this one, by the way, is a pre-September 2010 light, and the UI is a little bit different. They're both XPGR5 lights. Okay, the current version shipping, all subject to change, not subject, they will change, are the S2 LED versions. I would not get too wrapped up around the axle about the two versions. I'll talk about that maybe, if I remember, in burn, burn times. Um, and two benefits of me having waited so long to do the G5 review are one, you might be able to score that XPG R5 version for a lot less than when it came out. I mean, I think I saw it for 85 bucks, maybe even cheaper. Okay, um, and also my testing on both of the lights was extremely thorough. Okay, so you might find that interesting as well. Size and weight. If you're going to run regular lithiums in the Maelstrom G5, expect it to weigh 6 ounces. You want to run an 18650, 2600 milliamp rechargeable cell. There's one right there by Tenergy. It's going to weigh a little bit more, 6.8 ounces. These are great power cells. All of them are. 18650 here. This is a 2200 milliamp one. I think that's from AW. There's your standard CR123 uh, cells. Okay, that's, by the way, those are some of my favorite battery systems least as of 2011, because it means the light's going to be compact and lightweight. We'll get to how much uh, throw and burn time and brightness we get out of this power source here in a bit. Uh, Nothing fancy is a size to the point where you don't like it on the gun. No, actually it's not. When I was shooting and running and gunning with this, I actually found it to be doable. If I went above this size and weight, I'd become very uninterested though. Again, I don't like diminishing my swing weight on the gun okay and hanging a bunch of crap off your gun up front is just stupid and I don't do it that's why this is about a, as big as a weapon light I'd really want to go of course there's some variances on that I'm kind of jumping ahead to versatility talking point uh, and what I'm saying is how are you going to use a gun is it just coming out of a vehicle you don't plan on running and gunning with it ever maybe a bigger light in that philosophy of use would be more doable the size uh, is also adequate. Uh, outside the weapon POU, I think the size uh, is good enough for all around use. Perhaps not pocket use for me. Again, I'm kind of jumping to versatility. Bear with me. What I'm talking about is because this is a thrower, okay, the Maelstrom G5 is trying to get the maximum throw capable that it's capable of out of those power cells, which I'm all for, by the way. It's going to have, obviously, an enlarged head and an enlarged reflector. Is that the most comfortable light to carry in your pocket? I will tell you, absolutely not. You'd be better off with a straight-bodied PD-30 from Phoenix or one of the other excellent 4.7s lights that I've talked about in the project already. Uh, if you're willing to bust out the holster, which it does come with, it's a pretty good holster, not outstanding. Maybe I'll remember to talk about the details. Then it's, it's more doable. But the light is not super compact. And for my uh, most of my daily uses... I would prefer to go with something along the lines of the still excellent Phoenix LD20. Oh, there we go, rolling in a Phoenix light in the 4.7's review. Great light still. Size and weight, I may get back to that. Construction. All right, I'm going to start at the front, move quickly aft as much as I can. One thing I really love about the 4.7's Maelstrom is it has a removable bezel. I know it's not the only light that does it, but I think in terms of construction and features, 4.7's has got it going on. Uh, strike bezels rock, and if you're going to use this as a handheld flashlight, I would probably run it. Again, you may differ and want to affix the also included, normally black, uh, flat bezel. They're both included in the package. You take your pick. That is a uh, hardened tempered glass, I believe, with anti-reflective coating. There's a reflector. Designed for throw. In there you will see in these particular versions, XPG R5 die set. Perfectly centered in my estimation. And like we'll see uh, in the burn time section, uh, it throws a pretty good beam. Not perfect. It's not perfect. There's a donut hole in there. I'll mention that here again. Deep reflector. Oh, and by the way, if you don't like the reflector, you don't like the donut hole that it does have, go with a textured reflector also available for around $10 from the 4.7's uh, website. And those are easily swapped out by you, the user. Just unscrew that bezel, lift off the glass, 
throw on your LOP reflector if you want to, light orange peel. Okay, and that will give a smoother beam, maybe more um, applicable to utility tasks. We don't always want throw coming out of our light. With a weapon POU, definitely, for me, but with, you know, EDC light, utility light, maybe not the best thing. Take your pick. By the way, when you take that glass off there, it is not a self-contained module. In other words, you're able to take that out. I'd be real careful about scratching this up. I think 4.7s mentions that as well. Store it in a plastic baggie like that and blow it with some clean, compressed computer air, you know, that you blow off keyboards and stuff with. You'll probably still get specks of dust in there. I did. Couldn't get them out. All right, so there's your reflector. Um, and by the way, the XPG R5 and I think the S2 LED as well, they are bright, uh, like 29% brighter than previous versions, except they have a little bit more divergence. Trying to make up for it with reflector design is what 4.7s is doing. Okay, sorry if I'm getting the details wrong. I'm doing my best. There's your heat sink. And yes, you're going to generate some heat on maximum brightness mode. Knurling on the top head there. Uh, and I'll talk about in UI how you access the different lighting um, capabilities of it. There's the knurling on the 6061 body. Focus, focus, focus. Here we go. I like the knurling too, by the way. Uh, some of the best knurling I've ever seen, I've said this before, is on the Nightcore lights. Very sharp and purposeful. I overuse that word. Pretty nice though. And I'm missing my spacer ring there. I apologize. It does come with a clip. And with a spacer ring, that clip really locks down. Okay, double O-ring sealed on the back half. That's going to be important here in a second when I talk about waterproofness. Okay, there's a first O-ring, there's a second O-ring. Square threading, which 4.7s is famous for. That means it's durable, won't wear out. Check this out. We're talking about weapon light. Okay, shock isolation of the battery. And I will say also, the LED is important. And this is what they do. Both in the tail cap and in the front, you have a spring-loaded contact terminal. Okay, and I will tell you that it is effective. It works as designed. There's your tail cap. Here comes a minor downside, by the way. Um, as a tactical light, and this is kind of what I think of the Maelstrom G5 as, an overall tactical light, I don't like an exposed rubber switch. Here's why. Um, I'm in my pouch, and this is from experience. This isn't theoretical, dudes. This is me out there in the running and gunning, tactical clinics, doing the stuff you see. If I push it down into here, I can get the light coming on. Okay, you can see that I'm trying to snap it, the light comes on. That can be a very bad thing in a tactical application. Much better, I think. Okay, this is just me. Uh, is where is it? The Phoenix. Oh, here comes another Phoenix product, TA30. See the recess switch? And yes, 4.7s has a lot of those too. And maybe I'm missing it. Maybe there is a flush mounted cap that would fit uh, the G5. And there is, and if I miss it, I apologize. I would run that. Uh, off of this light more importantly even when mounted on a gun because I don't think a flush mounted switch is hard to actuate okay waterproofness and I probably forgot some stuff on the construction mm, oh yeah IPX8 is a waterproofness level let's go back in the time machine to last summer when 47 sent me a pre-production sample of the G5 and I kind of helped them test it a little bit all right, I threw that pre-production G5 into the Nut and Fancy water test, and it failed miserably. What? Yep, I was surprised too. I took it out. I, I alluded to this in other light reviews. I think in the Quark minis, I mentioned it. It was a G. One of them was a G5 pre-production. So relax. It was pre-production. Um, it did have water get inside of it, like in a bad way. I took it apart and I found um, that the big weakness of the design at that time was the head actually came off. This is, I can't show you with here, I may roll in some pictures for you. And there's actually a break in between the head and there's another, what I felt, an unnecessary O-ring. Uh, and I wrote David Chow and his crew and I said, hey, you know, if it's up to me, I, I would make that head one machined piece of aluminum, right? And I wouldn't, uh, to any degree, uh, have that broken up by a little O-ring. And subsequent versions, they did just that. Okay, so with the new versions of the G5, and I'm talking both of these lights, I redid the water test all over again. And I'm happy to report that even when actuating, 
all the modes underwater, shaking it, doing all the stuff that I do in the water test. Um, at about three feet depth, this isn't 25 feet, it passed with flying colors. No problems, no water ingress at all. And I've really come to expect that from all of the production for Seven's lights. Uh, I think you could probably take the G5 down to a lot uh, deeper water and have it pass with no problems at all. I'm talking waterproof test, it would pass. Um, so great job on the waterproofness. IPX8, uh, I'll probably annotate it somewhere, or maybe I won't. I've mentioned it so many times. Great waterproof light though, the G5, with its current version. Also, if you're going to use this as a handheld light, you might want to slam on your included retention ring, which will also prevent the light from rolling off the table, and that's where your lanyard's going to clip into as well, also included. Um, in my estimation though, the light's a little bit too big for lanyard use, maybe a lot too big at 6.8 ounces with that 18650 uh, cell. Uh, overall, I would say the Ergos are pretty good as a handheld light. Um, and I really dig the fact that 4.7's David Chow made it a one inch tube, both for handheld use and also for really super easy scope ring mounting. Yep, where's that Quark 123 Turbo? There it is. I had to shim that one. I use like plastic uh, from a school notebook and shim it and you know, guys would say, well, that's easy enough to do, right? Yeah, it is, but here's the problem when you shim it, is you really have to do it tight, and it takes a lot of experimentation to get it just so, because when you put these lights on a high recoiling gun, like a shotgun, if it's not just so, it's going to come flying out of that mount. Voice of experience, by the way. The one-inch tube on the Maelstrom G5 is a huge win, both for ergos and ease of mounting, and by the way, guys, this is how I do it. This is just a standard one-inch scope ring. Aluminum. Yes, aluminum will function. It's actually for an air gun. That's why that slot's there. You can see the double clamping screws. That gives it more clamping pressure. I put a athletic tape around it. Uh, one, to protect the Duracoat on this, and also for greater traction. Again, with double-odd buck, you know, shotgun, whatever, it's going to come flying out if you don't do that. Ergos are excellent overall. I think I mentioned most of the other stuff. Brightness and throw. I'm just going to roll all three of these TPs in together. Uh, good and bad uh, about the UI, I'm talking user interface of the Maelstrom G5. Do I like it? Uh, for handheld use, it's pretty decent. And what I'm talking about, guys, is there's actually a regular mode set and a special mode set with the G5. The way you're going to access it um, between the twos, let me say the way you're going to alternate between the twos is four rapid tightening and loosening cycles of the bezel and then you'll do it. I'm not doing it on camera because I have each of these lights set up and it's more time efficient that way. This one I believe is in the regular mode set where we will access the maximum mode. Okay, and then we go to high. It's really hard to discern between those two. Then we go to medium, keep going, about 90 degrees a turn is what will do it for you, they say. And then we go to a very useful lighting mode, which I've always said is the moonlight mode. Okay, let me turn this light off and see if you can see it. There you go, moonlight mode. I'm going to throw an annotation what the brightness levels are on each of those. And the burn time's not going to waste air time. Uh, let me tell you this, though. In my experience with these four seven lights, uh, actually every lighting product I have, whether it's Nightcore, O light, yes, I have some O lights uh, and some others. You're going to get about one third less the burn time than they say, especially if it's cold outside, even if you're running lithium batteries. Yeah, maybe even half of what they say. Okay, now this G5 previous version, this is actually a summer 2010 version, so the UI is a little bit different. Um, this is set up for the special mode set. Okay, and the cool thing between the two mode sets is you can access the max brightness level and that's a change they did later on in production so I don't want to confuse you you buy a G5 these days you're going to get it to where no matter what mode set you're in you can go to max brightness by cranking that is tightening the bezel to its full um, counterclockwise position you with me okay special mode set that we come over to strobe you also have a beacon and SOS mode okay and again I'll annotate the brightness and burn times on that 
I do notice on this earlier version of the G5 that their head rotates a little bit easier than this one. This is a later production uh, in 2010. Not a big deal. And I, I started to say, uh, you know, is is this perfect for a weapon light handheld use? For handheld use, it's not a big deal. You have two hands. That's maybe a downside that we need two hands to access um, the different brightness levels. Uh, you know, it is what it is, but we've seen it before, right? Again, Phoenix TA30. Although I will say one thing I loved about the Phoenix TA30 is it has a graphical depiction of what mode you're in. And it's very tactile and audible as you go between them. That might be a downside of the G5 because you don't have that. It's just going to be look and see. You know, crank it all the way left. Yeah, I'm full tight. That's maximum mode. Then it's silent. Some guys will really like that, especially if you're, they're talking a tactical light. A silent UI and you just rotate it. And then I go to high and the other modes. Okay, but you really have no indication on the side of the body where you're at. Not a big deal until you go to the weapon light. Okay, I was out in the desert shooting Keltec SU-16B and then the shotgun. And I was all alone out there on this particular outing. And I wanted to switch the light to a lower mode to save battery power and do some searching. Um, downrange and just experimenting. It's difficult to do when it's weapon mounted. That's where I'm going with this. Okay, twisting the bezel, especially on this version, which was actually used in the test, the black version, it's just a little bit tough. You know, uh, I was actually out there wishing I had a tap through UI. You know, kind of like the LD20 and also other versions of 4.7's lights, you know, where you just tap to access the light mode. Okay, now realistically speaking, when we throw it on a gun and we're going to use it on a rifle specifically because this is obviously too big for pistol we're talking rifle or shotgun light um, we're probably just going to leave it in maximum mode and we're just going to tap it when we need it dig uh, fair enough uh, that's that's the UI uh, very briefly I hope I didn't confuse you basically you need to understand there's two different mode sets call them whatever you want I think 4.7 does special and regular and you have uh, a maximum available in both. The difference in the original one is they took out, this version actually has what's called a low mode, but that's gone. They at least left the, the moonlight in there at 0.2 lumens, really smoking. Okay, these XPG R5s, by the way, these versions are pumping out on paper 350 lumens, not ANSI lumens, regular lumens, however they measured it before. The S2 version is going to be brighter, 375. If you order one now, you know, I should say, from 4.7s, you're going to get the S2 version. It's going to be brighter. Uh, and I'll throw, that's probably the, the one I'm going to throw up there for you since it's, uh, I'm talking the specs. How's the beam pattern? Uh, again, these are throwing lights. They're designed to throw. Okay, I'm going to roll in some beam shots for you right here. My camera doesn't do a great job with it. There's lots of other um, resources out there if you're really interested in the beam shots of the mouse from G5. Uh, it, it's pretty clean, except for the donut. Okay, that is an outgrowth of the smooth reflector, the deep smooth reflector. We talked about David Ch with David Chow about this several times, like shot 2010. Um, it's just the way it works. I mean, they're trying to get maximum throw. You're going to get that donut effect when you do that. If you don't like it, if you don't need that maximum throw, switch it over to the orange peel reflector. Uh, I think the spill beam is functional, and I think as a handheld light, um, and just an area light, maybe a portable searchlight that you really need something compact and ready to go in a survival kit or something, G5 will rock for you. You're really going to be happy with it. Getting back to the opening question though, when we're talking about throw, we're talking about brightness, is it the perfect weapon light? Uh, and more importantly, how much better is it than the very high value still available, at least as of 2011, 4.7's Quark 123 Turbo? Um, I will say this is very subjective, guys, but it's from my own real-world testing, not in a parking lot, but out there shooting on steel in pitch black darkness under, I will say, rushed conditions. It's about 20% better. What? That may surprise guys. They'd say, well, no way, man. On paper, the G5 should just dominate the 123. Again, I'm just saying subjective. I, sh I shot both of these lights side by side and they're still far from perfect in terms of illuminating to the levels that me as a gun user at 100 yards, 100 meters would like to see. Um, a case in point is I was really trying to discern a 10 inch steel plate at again about 125 yards. 
uh, and with the G5, I was unable to do it. Granted, it was frigid cold, you know, uh, the scope on this gun you're looking at right here, that's one reason I've left it on the table, um, you know, it was uh, icing up, it was so cold out there. And I had a very hard time, actually an impossible time, even with the G5, finding that plate. Now, on my full Ipsic torso plate, which is also steel from actiontarget.com, love it, um, I was able to see it, made hits on that all night long. No problems at all. But when it came smaller, the target became smaller. I'm still not getting the the really concentric hardcore beam that's staying together out to 100 yards. This still is washing out on me. So kind of like the Quark 123, I'm going to term this light as about a 50 to 75 yard light. And beyond that, and I'm talking weapon POU guys, the very demanding philosophy of use. Beyond that, uh, I think it's more of an area light. It just uh, splits apart. Are there other lights that do the job better? Probably. Are there going to be more that will come down the pike in the future? Uh, absolutely. But one thing you got to consider is they're probably not going to run with this power cell. Okay, the one, two, three form factor, which I love because it's field replaceable. I can put disposables in. You have several rechargeable options. They're going to go kind of the way of looking in the 4.7's catalog, which by the way is excellent kind of along the way of the S12 using a proprietary battery. By the way, there's the X7. That's also an upgrade to the G5 putting out on paper 480 lumens. Uh, my take right now, seeing what I've seen between a broad area lights is I don't think it'll be that much greater. Real world I'm talking. Um, but the S12, I'm sorry, the X10 and the S12 are going to use a proprietary different battery. And therein lies where I think we're going to see major increases in capabilities in the lights of this size, is we got to upgrade the battery sources. And please, please, please keep them user replaceable, disposable varieties. But right now we're stuck with this snapshot in time. Okay, there you have it. 20% better than the Quark 123. Still an excellent weapon light. Light enough, kind of on the borderline of lightness. Back to the talking points. Making progress, dudes. Versatility. Okay, I've been talking a lot about the weapon light POU. Hope I'm not boring you with that. Um, that's where you know I'm standing on it. Uh, other versatility I made mention already. Searchlight. Nothing fancy. Is it a great backpacking light? Short answer: No way, man. It's way too big. It's too heavy. I'm not packing up a seven ounce light. You know, seven, eight, fifteen miles in the backcountry. What comes with me is another outstanding, previously reviewed 4.7s product, Quark 123 and the Phoenix headband. Oh. What a great combo. And this sucker, like I've talked about in the review, has enough capability as a searchlight. And it runs those CR123 bats that I can, you know, throw in there. Super lightweight. Maybe it's the Mini AA running a 14500 power cell, pumping out 250 lumens. Oh, great light. Uh, those are the kind of lights I'm going to backpack with. Maybe, just maybe, if it's a short trip, I'll take a Quark 123 Turbo. I ain't taking something that big. Daily light, I think it's a little bit too big. Uh, car light, yes. Now we're talking something that I think will be outstanding. A bedside light, um, great throw out to that distance. And let me say this too. If you're not using a weapon POU, I think usable illumination at 100 meters, 100 yards, whatever, usable. You guys, you know, in the parking lot test, when you run it out there, you're going to say, yeah, this is great. I'm real happy with it. What I'm saying is that when you're under a little bit of pressure and you really, really need to identify your target um, at that distance, it's just not enough light for me. It's just not defined enough for me. Okay? And also, I'll, let's keep it real. What I'm talking about is probably shooting steel at 100, maybe a little bit past 100 yards. In a real-life self-defensive situation, you probably ought, ought to be bugging out <laughs> if the dude's still at 100 yards instead of trying to designate him and pinpointing your location with a bright weapon light. Okay, so uh, what I'm talking about is mostly testing and shooting steel, which is a blast, by the way. All right, let's crank it. Track record. Here's something cool. I took these lights, and actually I heard rumor that uh, a light failed. I won't mention the brand. Out in Afghanistan with a troop. He said, yeah, the dust got in. I was like, really? I'd never heard of that. Haven't seen it in my own testing. So what did I do? I took this black version out there in the desert with me, slammed it in a bucket of dirt. I really wish it would have been like really fine dust, but it's snowing cold, so I did what I could do, and I shook it up for like 10 minutes. 
shake, shake, shake. I'm seeing if I, I taped the, the glass up so it wouldn't get scratched and seeing if I could get anything to fail. Again, the Maelstrom G5 passed with flying colors. Okay, so that was another test I conducted. Um, and I was really impressed with that, by the way, that it, it did so well. That's why the, the anodizing is a little bit scratched up. Not too bad, though. Uh, another test I did on the light, which I thought uh, was necessary, since I'm talking so much about it, is shotgunning. Slammed on a Remington 870 out there in the cold darkness. Sent down range a number of full-on slug and buckshot loads, seeing if it would fail. And uh, like I said, already in construction, the double shock isolation that is at the bezel end, at the, uh, this end, it works, didn't fail at all. And not surprised, the Quark 123 Turbo passed as well. Good job, 4.7s. These are tough lights, okay? Waterproof testing, passed. Shock, passed. Dust, dirt test from nothing fancy, passed. Track record's pretty slamming. Don't forget, 10-year warranty, guys. So if you don't like it, send it back. They'll take care of you. Uh, no light's going to be 100% perfect. I don't care what manufacturer uh, it is. It could be 4.7s. It could be O-Light. It could be any number of other lighting companies. But give the company a chance if you have problems. Cost and value. Uh, things are changing so rapidly with the versions of the G5. I even hate to throw it out there. I mentioned a price on the XPG R5 version, and that's a snapshot in time. Uh, I think for what you're getting, uh, you're getting a lot of light, and it's definitely less expensive than, I don't know, some Surefire options, kind of like the, the Scout Series, M600 Scout Series, which, by the way, only puts out, I think, in its top form, 200 lumens, and it, it slams out at a retail of, like, 350 bucks. I mean, that's what I'm talking about. That I just have issues with that. You know, I just have serious issues. If you score a Maelstrom G5 for under five, uh, $100, that's a good deal. You get an XPG version for $75, slamming. Nothing fancy. Is it better than the Quark 123 Turbo? That is a very good question, actually. Is it worth the extra money? Valid question. I don't know if I can answer it, um, you know, perfectly for you. There's that word again. 20% better. It does have more throw. It does have more brightness than the Quark 123. However, it's bigger. You know, if I'm running a Tactical 22, guess which line I'm going with? This one. Quark 123, dudes. Smaller. And, and I'm only shooting out to 50 yards anyhow. If I'm going out to 100 yards, maybe 75 yards, then definitely I would upgrade to G5. Take the extra weight. Remember everything I saw, talked about in swing weight. Okay. There you go, man. Quark, it's not Quark, 4.7s, Maelstrom G5, an excellent weapon light, an excellent handheld searchlight, home light, vehicle light, maybe not the best backpacking light. Um, it's your call. Uh, but you talk about construction features, pretty slamming. Uh, values, pretty excellent as, as well. Uh, you know, portable lighting technologies, just like I said two years ago, guys moving fast i mean four seven supersedes their own technology seems like every six months i would not feel bad locking into this though so don't say oh i got me a g5 and xpg r5 and now it sucks yes two versions out who cares it's still great hang on to it um I'll, heck i'm still using the ld20 like on backpacking trips i do take that once in a while or I better yet, I have my son carry it. <laughs> so there's some other lights. These are actually more light, area lights, X10, S12, just like we saw with David Chow shot 2011. The X7 is a little bit of an upgrade. Maybe I'll talk about that in the future. There you go. Nothing fancy. Flashlight review. Outstanding. Maelstrom G5. Trying to keep it as honest and helpful as I can for you guys. Thanks for watching.